So my name is Thomas Reif. I was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I was born into a, a very drug addicted family, generations of, of drug addiction, and um, my mother and father were both addicted to drugs. My dad was in and out of prison through my childhood. Um, I just had a very violent, a very traumatic childhood growing up. Um, eventually I would, I would be placed into foster care with my brother and my sister, and that would end up being a lot more trauma, a lot more uh, violence that, it, it just seemed to follow me through my, my childhood. At the age of 14, I would be adopted by my mother, Susan. That was a lot better. Uh, it seemed like at that time, I was, I was pulled out of a very violent environment and placed into a loving home. It still wasn't a Christian home. Throughout my childhood and throughout middle school and high school, I never really thought about God. He just wasn't, simply wasn't on my radar. Now, after high school, I, I went off and, and I joined the military and I met my wife, Ashley. And right before my deployment to Afghanistan, we got engaged. And I, I went off and I deployed to Afghanistan in, in 2012. Now, while we were in Afghanistan, it was a, a mild combat deployment. Um, I did lose my really good friend, Cody Suggs, while we were overseas. And, and that just kind of took a, a piece of my heart, you know, when, when he died. And I came home and I just struggled with, uh, with a lot of emotions, a lot of things that I didn't know um, how to really deal with, a lot of anger. I was just a different person. And for me, I thought it was normal, just like everyone else that returned from, from a deployment to Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, it was just a normal part of life. So I, I continued on with life and, and I kind of just shoved it down and I didn't really think a whole lot of it. And I always had this dream. I had a dream of becoming a police officer and, and eventually to become a narcotics detective. That was my goal in life from a, a very young age after seeing what drug addiction had done to my family. And I got hired by a, a department in Southern Oregon in 2014, and I achieved my dream. I, I quickly fell in love with the job, and, and I devoted every ounce of my life to becoming the best police officer that I could be. And throughout my, my career, I experienced a lot of violence again. Um, I, I worked in a very violent town, Klamath Falls, Oregon, and there were a lot of homicides. I had to investigate a lot of murders, a lot of fatal car accidents, um, suicides, child deaths. Uh, just a lot of, of really traumatic things that we would have to investigate these types of things. Um, and it really started to have an effect on me. It started to uh, harden my heart. Um, and I would come home and I, and I, didn't, I didn't have any emotions. I, I didn't know how to feel anymore. I was, I was angry all the time. I was having a hard time sleeping. I was having a hard time concentrating and just focusing. Um, and it really started to have an effect when I, when I started to have nightmares and I eventually started to have flashbacks and I, uh, would hear kids crying and, and screaming and, and I just couldn't get through these emotions and these things that I was feeling and um, in the position that I was in I had to hide it, I had to keep it a secret, I had to, to cope with it without letting anyone know. In a way I did that I started using alcohol like many combat veterans and, and first responders do um, just to kind of shove down the emotions, to kind of shove down everything that I was feeling. and. Eventually, that didn't work anymore, and I, and I, and I started using drugs. Um, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that drugs and being a police officer don't mix very well. Uh, I was now a narcotics detective working on a drug team, and I got called out to do surveillance one night, and I went to the police department and removed what I believed to be cocaine from the evidence locker, and I used it. And at the time, I didn't realize, but it was actually 99% pure fentanyl and I had taken enough probably to kill a couple hundred people. Uh, and the last thing I remember of that night was waking up in the hospital. I was later told that I overdosed, near fatal overdose on, on the fentanyl. I crashed my detective vehicle. And this is where God really intervened into my life. At the time of this crash, I was an atheist. I didn't even believe in God. I, I actually I would argue with Christians as to why God didn't exist. And at the time of my crash, an ambulance was in the intersection and stopped, loaded me up in the back, rushed me to the hospital that was 10 minutes away, and the doctor said if that ambulance hadn't have been there, I would have 100% died. Now, when I woke up in the hospital, I had my lieutenant and sergeant and all these doctors standing around me, and, and I knew that my life had just come crashing down. I knew that nothing was ever gonna be the same. Um, I, I always had a plan for this moment, and it was that I was gonna commit suicide if this ever came out. And that was my plan. I planned as soon as I left the hospital to go home and to commit suicide. And 
I went home and, and all I, I went home and, and all I could think about was the shame and the guilt and the devastation that I had caused to my wife and my kids and the people that I had worked with. No one knew that I was struggling like this and 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 I knew inside that this was all going to come out that my my secrets um, of using drugs and struggling with PTSD was was going to be a big deal and a few days later my one of my really good friends with the Oregon State Police he came to my house with his pastor and the first thing he said to me was Thomas I'm concerned that if you would have died, I'm concerned that you would have went to hell. And I, and I remember just sitting there thinking um, about the reality of that. And then he, and he told me that, Thomas, I've come because I want to introduce you to God. And I remember telling him, I said, Austin, God can't help me. I've made, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made too many mistakes. God can't help me through this. And, and I remember him and his pastor just shared the gospel with me. And they said, Thomas, God, God loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter the mistakes that you've made. Um, God still loves you and he has a plan for your life and he has a purpose. And I remember sitting there and I'm like, okay, well, I, I don't believe that awesome, but, but thank you for coming over. And he, and he left. And the next day I remember just, I, I couldn't help but think, that I needed to figure out who God was. I had this burning desire inside of me that, that um, I couldn't explain. And I became obsessed with trying to figure out who God was. And, and this continued for a few months. I would go on to, to complete a, a military um, Christian program for combat veterans. And at that, at that time, I, I completely surrendered my life to God. And I said, Lord, if you can reveal yourself to me, if you can change my life, it, it is yours. And Things were still hard. I still had to deal with the consequences of my sin, the consequences of my actions, and I would eventually go on to commit suicide or attempt to commit suicide, which led me to being in a military hospital for two months. He, he used this time in the hospital to transform my heart, to, to give me a heart of flesh, um, to renew my mind. And, and this was two months where I got to spend with him and I got to study his word and I got to learn how to be more like Jesus and, and how to, to, to follow Jesus. And through this, I remember waking up one morning, uh, it was about 5 a.m. and I actually woke up and I was just filled with guilt and shame and, and just had this heaviness on my heart. And at the exact same time, I was filled with, with this light. And I remember it was like a light from heaven just entered into my chest and I was filled um, with the spirit. And, and at the time I didn't know you know what this meant. And I, and I started to speak in another language that I couldn't understand. After about a half hour, um, it stopped and I was sitting there and I, I knew it was from God. I knew that whatever had just happened was from the Lord. And he led me to Acts chapter two. And I began reading where the disciples were in the upper room and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And everything that had happened in Acts chapter two had happened to me. And at that moment, I remember just sitting there and, and I was crying and I, and I just thought, oh my gosh, he really is who he says he is. And everything changed from that moment forward. I remember my wife uh, called the doctor and, and she thought I was going crazy. And the doctor actually thought I was going crazy. But after a, a little while, I was, I was no longer on medication. I, I no longer struggled with PTSD. I no longer struggled with nightmares or insomnia. I was completely healed and delivered from everything in the blink of an eye. Um, and after I was released from the hospital, I, I realized that I was called to full-time ministry. And I started pursuing full-time ministry. And through that, the Lord crossed paths with um, Teen Challenge. And I was offered, offered a position to be the director of Adult and Teen Challenge in Tri-Cities. I'm now in full-time ministry, like I said, as the director of Adult and Teen Challenge. And, and what I have to say, though, is, is, is if you're sitting here today, if you're watching this video, and you're thinking to yourself that, man, I've made some mistakes like that. I've, I've destroyed my life. I, maybe you have a broken marriage or you don't see your kids or maybe you're in drug addiction or maybe you're, you're simply, you were a professional and you made some mistakes and, and you've destroyed your life. But I, I wanna tell you today that Jesus does have a plan for you, that God has a plan. So I'd invite you today, if that's you, I'd invite you just to, to repeat after me. Father, we thank you. We thank you for dying on the cross, Jesus, for giving us the opportunity to have a new life, for rising again on the third day. Lord, I invite you into my heart to be the, the Lord and Savior of my life. I invite you to take complete control of my life. I surrender my life to you. And I thank you so much for being my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.